now. Hi everybody, so welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, this one is a little bit special because of the major outage we had last week. So um, I'm going to, to give you a quick overview of the different components that were involved in the outage, uh, what they are doing. Um, and so we'll discuss as well about um, what we can do to prevent um, such thing to happen again. So the first thing to understand is we have the way the Jenkins project distribute packages contains four different services um, that we name update center. So updates.jenkins.io. So updates.jenkins.io distributes a uh, plugin version. So when from your Jenkins instance, you want to update the plugins or update the Jenkins core, um, this is the service that 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 is um, that is um, that you are reaching. So basically, this service is generated every three minutes, and so it contains a list of every plugins that you can install for your Jenkins version. Um, so every th every th three minutes, we generate the list, and then um, when you want to install a specific plugins, then you are redirected to the mirroring service. This is something that I will explain in. A little bit. This next major service is package Jenkins.io. That service contains the distribution packages. So when you want, for instance, to install Debian package or Red Hat package, you just run happy to get installed uh, Jenkins. And so the instructions are located on the package of Jenkins.io and it contains the metadata information that you need to install Jenkins on your service. Um, the same then same than the update center. If you need to download a package, it's not downloaded from package of Jenkins.io, it's downloaded from the mirror, uh, the mirroring service. And then we arrive to the to the two mirroring service that you know. So the first one is the, the deprecated one, the old one, which is mirrors.jenkins.org. So this service has been deprecated over the last summer. Um, the reason to that is because it's rely on an application called mirrorbrain which is not maintained since a while, um, still use Python 2.7. Uh, we had issues to scale it. And so we decided to, to, re to remove that service uh, by the one that we had issues last week, which is get the Jenkins.io. So get the Jenkins.io use um, rely on two applications. So the Redis database to store the indexes, the file indexes, uh, the file hash, a list of hashes for every files available that you can download. And obviously you, we need the, the files that we are distributing and those are stored on Azure file storage. So basically what happened last week is the volume, uh, the Redis database um, crashed. We had, um, we had issues to mount it in the Redis uh, server. Um, and so because the Dutch release database was not available, it forced the getter Jenkins IO pod to restart. Um, we fixed the Redis database by redeploying it on a managed service um, because we were not able to, to access the Azure disk used by the database for some reason. And so we, we deploy a managed uh, Redis service. And so after that, we were not able to use the Azure file storage used inside get.jenkins.io. So Mirrorbits mirror has no way to know which package could be distributed to the user. And so obviously because the mirroring was broken, um, the update center and the package of Jenkins.io could not work correctly. So that's, that's basically what happened to us. Um, last week. So we open uh, an Azure support ticket um, to ask why um, it stopped working. So the service get.jenkins.io has been running since March last week um, and we never experienced such issues. So it's really new to us and we still don't understand why the volume is behaving like that. Um, so it took us a while to understand um, the, that the volume was broken because some files could be uh, retrieved and others not. So typically um, distribution packages uh, files like the Debian, Red Hat and so on are available. But for some reason, when we try to read um, the plugins information, um, it, it, it send us a timeout issue. So we are not able to read the data. We receive a many different errors. And so basically what we decided to do Saturday morning when we realized that we would not find a way to retrieve access correctly to, the, to that Azure file storage, um, we decided, <coughs> sorry, to reuse uh, the Mirrors, the Jenkins.io 
service, so the, the same machine that already have every files that we distribute in our infrastructure. So we just decided to redeploy mirror bits on that machine. So that's what we did until now. So the service is back, um, is working again. The problem is we, we usually use automated um, workflow to, to update the application. And so in this case, we just manually deploy mirror bits on the service. So the good thing is the, the machine running mirror bits at the moment is big enough to handle the load. Um, but we still, we are still at the moment wondering if when we will be able to use Azure Fire Storage, if it's the right um, service that we should rely on. Um, and so, yeah, we still have an open Azure ticket at the moment, and we are still discussing with Azure support to know what's happening. So any question until now, before I continue? To clarify, the problem is still ongoing and we still haven't heard from Azure support in any useful way. Yes, exactly. That's the point. So we had a call with Azure um, today. So we spent the afternoon with them to try to identify and to replicate the, As I said, it's really weird because I can, so it's a, so Azure Fire Storage, it's a CIFS volume. So I can't mount it on my machine. Um, I can mount it on my machine. <clears throat> I can list some files, I can mod modify, create files, but the directory slash plugins does not work. If I try to, to access it, I receive a discot issue. But if I go to the portal, uh, to the Azure web interface, there I can create files in the slash plugins directory. So it's a really weird issue. Um, and yeah, that, that's something that we are still trying to understand why it's affecting us. Did I answer your question, Daniel? Yes, thank you. Um, so right now, um, so the service is still working. So um, that's a good thing. Um, the, to the question is, could we have prevent this to happen? I don't think so. Um, because we had issues with uh, network storage, both for the Redis uh, volume and for um, the Gather Jenkins LIO volume, we had network issues, um, and I mean we don't we don't we don't we don't use those servers. I mean we don't manage those services. Those are provided by our Azure accounts. Um, but what I think we could have done better is first to communicate about the outage. Um, I, I, I was in communication with a lot of people over la last week and over the weekend as well about what was the current state, why we were um, having that issues and so on. And apparently it ended up that Twitter was uh, the right support channel for that. Um, I mean, maybe not the right, but yeah, I think we really like a central way for the people to understand what was the current, the current situation. So one of the things that I've been wondering now is, um, about having a status page for the Jenkins project. So I already shared this uh, previously, but there is a project um, that could allow us to, to generate, to, to provide information to a static page by providing markdown. So we could say, okay, we have a planned maintenance coming. We have uh, a current issues. And so if you have any question, feel free to, to redirect um, to those locations. So if you want, I can do a quick, um, a quick, a quick demo um, of what I was able to, to provision this morning. Um, any suggestions on that, this topic? So then um, I I'm, it's not clear to me why we would do that. I mean, it appears more professional and, but uh, Twitter as long seems like a very low barrier to actually post something as long as we have anyone available with access to the Twitter account for example during the EU night uh, you're offline Tim is offline as long as we have one of the social media folks around we can say hey we have infra problems could you post a tweet nobody needs to know how to use it and a self-hosted status page sounds a lot like if we have infra trouble, the status page will be offline as well and we'll just post a tweet anyway. So yes, it's not as fancy as, you know, githubstatus.com, but I think as long as we make sure that once we, as soon as we confirm 
there's a problem that we post a tweet, um, I think that's fine. Um, and also that's probably where people look. Uh, the problem with a status page is we need to advertise it and make people aware of it. And if nobody knows it exists, uh, nobody has any, ben any benefit from it. So I, I, totally, I totally agree with you about the fact that people first look at Twitter and it's easier to just put, post a Twitter message. And I also agree with you that um, if there is an infra outage, we'll probably be focusing on the infra outage instead of creating a markdown or notification and working on this. Um, this is something that, I mean, this is something that takes time. Um, I just have the feeling this time that um, I received the notification again, right? I'm using Twitter, I'm using uh, LinkedIn, I'm, I'm using Reddit, um, and I received a notification by email, by RC, by Twitter. I mean, I, ha I had the feeling that I was just receiving way too much information and I could just not answer all of them. And so I was just wondering if using a status page could just say, okay, you know what? I just provide one information and just look at um, that. Right. Right. Uh, Sorry. Just saying, so the status page one that Olivia posted earlier, you, you don't run it on your own infrastructure. Um, it's got a one click deploy to Netlify for a like free deployment sort of setup. Um, so it doesn't touch any of your other infrastructure. Um, yeah, so what you want yeah. for a status page. So, so that, uh, Tim, Tim, Tim and Daniel, so that's a good point. Um, we obviously need to be sure that the status page is not running in our infrastructure because obviously if we are having issues with our infrastructure um i mean it can be problematic for it okay. the, the way you had phrased that sounded a lot like it would be part of our infra and it sounds kind of silly um okay yeah but if that's not a problem still i mean i saw some of the tweets and there was an announcement posted in 20 minutes uh, later someone posted hey any updates and i'm like dude what what do you expect um yeah. so i and i really doubt that this would just magically go away by uh us having a status page yeah but then you can just link the status page rather than having to repeat yourself yeah i mean yeah i think i mean I, we don't have to work on the status page. I, I think it may be a nice to have. Um, if we put one, we definitely doesn't need to be in our infrastructure. I just want to, to give you a quick overview of what I, I did this morning. So just this is just mainly an example from the CS state project. And so it just puts a markdown like we would do for the Jenkins, Jenkins Radio website. And so we can, we can specify um, few information in the, the file, like what are the tags? So we could say in this case, okay, we had get, get the Jenkins other issues. These affect those websites. Um, and so we can provide the description of the outage with link to Twitter, the Google discussions and so on. And so we could also be able to, to list all the issues that affected that specific service in the past. So it's more like, um, it's, it's more like it's not a monitoring tool. Um, it doesn't detect if your service is down. We can, we could, for example, say, okay, we have a maintenance coming in the coming weeks. Uh, let's say we know that the beginning of December we want to do a maintenance. We can, we could plan this in advance if, and notify that. But it just, I think it's more, we can more see it like a way to communicate about what are the major things. But obviously, we want the idea is not to slow down our processes. But yeah, there's these are suggestions that I was doing for. Um, I, I like the idea for us being able to use it for things that would ma not make the Twitter account. So that would be a real benefit. Like if we're doing uh, perhaps a migration of sorts or the work that Tim and I were doing on Update Sender 2, that would not qualify, I think, for the Twitter account because we have no idea whether anyone cares or whether anyone even notices but ultimately we some people noticed and uh, if we had just just had had the status page there that says we're tweaking our infra please report wherever if you notice problems i think that that would really be nice so i can see the benefit there i think it'd be easier to get updates out because we do have limited twitter people and time zones don't always line up, whereas at least here, you could have a fairly liberal merge policy on 
an incident is you don't really care who does it as long as someone gets it done. And, on, and also another, another thing that I like with this specific that status page is it allows us to share Datadog dashboards because right now when I need a specific dashboard, I create it, but there is no way to have um, an easy remember uh, URL. And so we could, for example, let me share my screen again. Um, uh, sorry. Are you still there? Yes, you are. You see my screen? Still black? Now it shows. Okay, perfect. So um, basically, um, so let me first show you what it would look like the way we configure it. So Jenkins Infra CS states. Um, so it's one major configuration where you can define um, archives. So you can you can you define the different tags. So for example, I say okay, I have the tags archive.jenkins.io, um, which is running in Rackspace. I have adapt.jenkins.io. So you can specify a bunch of tags, and so you can filter for specific event like this. But you can also provide links. Uh, so if you go back here, you, we could, for example, say here there is a link to our monitoring solution. Um, and so you're automatically redirected to Datadog. Uh, obviously, in this case, it's not useful because it's not publicly available. But we could have um, we could have for each services a description of what the service is doing. So LDAP.jenkins.io is our LDAP service. But we could also provide links to dashboards that could tell people. Is it um, is it working? Um, do we have like um, I mean any information that could tell us if it's working correctly? Because that's also something that happened to me over the weekend is because people knew that we had issues with get the Jenkins IO. People sent a lot of requests asking for help, saying, "Okay, right, I have a network issue." And the thing is, the service was back, but because I knew that I had an issue with get the Jenkins IO, I spent quite a lot of time each time to investigate if the problem was on our side or if it was just a random network misconfigured. Um, and so I think we could use this kind of service to provide information to the end users. So, yeah. Uh, again, um, are you, how are you thinking of deploying it? Just using Netlify or something else? Or? Uh, well, so the thing is, that's that's another point that I, that I was thinking to bring. So Netlify as an as an open source plan that we could um, that we could leverage. Oops, sorry, that was not the right window. So Netlify as um, as an open source plan that we could leverage, um, and so. We, we can already use a free free tier so it just again as Tim mentioned it's just one minute we just we just define the configuration that we need and we push to netlify have been using netlify for my project and it's working great um and if we want to but the thing is it's just basic features and if we want more like analytics and stuff like that then we have to to use uh, the open source plan but as a first iteration i would just go we'll go with the free tier yeah, makes sense to me. I don't think it's much work. Um, so if you don't have any questions, um, I create a Jira ticket to keep the track of, uh, of this work. But again, this this won't be the priority, just a nice to have. So if someone is interested to help with this one, um, I will just create a Git repository and we will iterate uh, on this one. Yeah, you just create a Git repo and let us know. Um, the next, um, yeah. The next thing that I've been wondering is how we could have detected this outage, and this is something that I've been wondering for a while: is how we can monitor that the latest packages are available. Uh, and so um, I, I already started working a while uh, some some times ago, and I just finished this. But the idea is to have a Datadog custom checks that test what are the latest stable and weekly releases. And then ping the different endpoints on get the Jenkins.io. So if um, 
if we just release a weekly release, we assume that get the Jenkins layer should be able to return um, the appropriated um, packages. Um, the, the custom check is done. Uh, I just finished it today, I think. So I'm going to enable it. So the idea is, is more to, to detect um, the issue that we had with get the Jenkins layer sooner. Because typically what happened here, I think it took me two hours before being notified about the, about the outage. Um, and I think it's, yeah, it's quite a lot. Yeah, and someone, the, I think it came up in IRC, I'm not sure. Yeah, we really, I mean, on, on this specific topic, we really rely on user monitoring. Um, someone complains and then we investigate and that's it. And it's not acceptable because the, the service, so by, basically what, what was weird in this case is we had a lot of side effects about the outage because one of the, one of them was if get the Jenkins array was not available, could not use any mirrors, then it fall back to to itself. And so the thing is, mirror bits do not provide um, do not provide the files. It always redirects you to mirrors. And so we just deploy an Apache uh, next to mirror bits a service that just allows you to browse the different files and to provide you. But because all the mirrors were done, we just redirect the full traffic of mirrors to our own service. So we were just literally um, down and yeah. So we had this. On the side to that, do we need to change the fallback to archives? Because I thought that the OUSO fallback we're using right now doesn't have all artifacts on there. Um, so that's a good point. I think um, it has every plugin. So it doesn't have the old uh, Jenkins version, but it should have every plugins. Um, I increased the limits that archive can um, can accept. So we could we could we could um, use it instead of uh, the current mirror. Well, yeah. We could just I, it. Oh yes. The, the, to, to be to be honest, uh, the, the mirror bit is running, and I just don't want to to to, to stop it right now. Um, so as long as it's running, I would like first to find to understand if which bring me to the next point, if we stick to Azure file storage or not, um, if we consider that service reliable enough, because yeah, it's been a few days and I still don't understand why it's broken. Um, but the problem is the way we release version rely on the Azure file storage um, because we use specific tools to publish the file tiers. And so if we realize that we don't want to use Azure file storage anymore, then it means that we also have to update the release scripts um, to push somewhere else. And the thing is right now we are pushing a lot of things to a machine, which is package Jenkins and IO. And ideally I would like to remove, um, to split the responsibility of that machine because right now it does way too much things. And each time we modify one component on that machine, it affects other services um, like update center and um, and the backend uh, update center, yeah. And some specific uh, other scripts. Um, so right now we are using that machine temporarily, but ideally I would like to use a different solution. So if it's not Azure file storage, uh, we have to think about a different way to basically to use it. Any question on this topic while we are discussing about the outage? Maybe you have other ideas. Um, I'm really open to suggestions about the different ways that we could have managed this outage. Um, to to me, I think it will depend on what the response from Azure is um, and whether we get any use, anything useful from them. Um, if they say, if they basically shrug and say, we, we don't know what's going on now, obviously that would not give me the confidence that I would like to continue using it. Um, or otherwise, if they say, yeah, we've identified the problem, it's extremely unlikely to happen again. I would be more inclined to continue using it. So basically I'm saying I don't, I would make it dependent on what they say and they have not yet told us anything. And of course that being four days now is also a problem, of course. 
Yeah. Part so, of that, so, I was probably on support ticket and priorities on that. And, how, and we are just not sure if we chase support much and that we didn't have a critical case open and those sort of things. So if we had a critical case open, you get a 24 seven management and we didn't do that. So is this a case where we ought to admit we're going to spend more money, purchase the Microsoft support and stay with Azure as the lowest cost option for now? Olivia, I think you had to purchase some support privileges, some sort so, of thing. So yeah, that's that's something. Um, so when when Microsoft stopped sponsoring us, we lost access to the supports. And so we had, so the support that we had before DOTH was just having access to the document. So we could not open a support ticket. Um, for some reason, I was able to open a support ticket last Thursday regarding the Azure disk volume issue that happened for Redis. And then when I wanted to open an Azure file storage issue, uh, ticket, sorry. Um, then it said that we didn't have um, support, basically. Um, so for some reason. Um, so I paid for the support plan. So it's $100, uh, $100 per month. Um, so I paid it last week. Um, and anyway, I think we will not be able to move away from Azure uh, anytime soon. Because if we decide to move away from Azure, um, I mean, we still have, we are still using specific services and we would have to update our scripts. Um, just for example, for, for the release environments, um, we are using specific, um, we are using Azure Key Vault, for instance. Um, it's not a big deal if we have to switch to something else, but um, yeah, it would just, it means that we would have to work on that instead of working on something else. Yeah. It seems like that says we ought to accept the increased cost and include that hundred dollars a month in our budget. Does it need? I think you mentioned a hundred dollar versus a thousand dollars a month. Is there a significant? Given the the pain that this caused the community, etc., is it worth a thousand dollars a month? No, no, because and also what I think is right now we are spending around eight thousand per month on that on that accounts. Um, One hundred. Dollar is not a big amount, but I would not pay it uh, one thousand if we just pay. I mean, if we pay eight thousand per month, eight thousand. Um, so I think for now it's fine to to pay the one hundred dollar per month. Uh, we also have some. Uh, we are also now paying for our Redis database, uh, so it should be three hundred dollar per month. I will the de I will scale down the instance. So because it um, I was in the rush, I put a big instance just to be sure. But we don't use the full, so I have to scale down the, the release database that we are using right now. So yeah, I think per month it should be like we should increase by two hundred or three hundred dollars per month. So it's not it's not a big deal. So on that side, I think it's good. Okay, so it seems like one action out of this is. We accept the the increased cost and willingly uh, accept the ongoing support payment to Microsoft. Yep. But I think uh, we are now spending more money again on Azure account, so we would have to, to spend some time to to reevaluate how we can save money on that account. Because we still have a hard limit, a hard limit of 10,000 10, per month. So we have to revisit uh, expenses to be sure we stay in budget. Yeah. Um, while, yeah, that's it. Any other question regarding this outage? So again, the, the, the service is not back again. So I'll send a communication once, um, once, once we know a little bit more about what's happened with Azure file storage, um, if we could have prevented it and um, what would be the, the downside decisions about um, that architecture. So, so there were a couple of things that I realized. I thought I knew how to access the cluster and could not. And I was one of the people during my time zone that should have been able to. So 
I'll take the action to, to get my education improved again. I'm sure we know how to do that in the in the West Coast US time zone, basically. So we've got a little more coverage and in, instead of just relying on those of you in Europe. Yeah, some th something really important in this case is because the error was not obvious, uh, I had to face with a lot of weird side errors, like timeout issues that were not supposed to be there, um, the container that would not start because of mounting issues and stuff like that. So yeah, it was it was a tough one to, to diagnostic. Um, it's very weird that we got two issues. <laughs> Sorry? Well, I guess one of those issues had been going on for quite a while. It just reared its head on Meribits that day, but then we also had file storage issues. So, yeah, we are already over uh, the, the limits. So um, what I propose is we quickly cover the different topics or maybe you prefer, I think, I mean, I would I skip the topic I had proposed, Olivia. We'll wait till next week. But okay, with, so the topic then, then we've I, been covering was much more important. So then I propose to stop the meeting here, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll cover the other topics. Um, um, just one thing before we leave. Um, obviously, the fact that Mirror bids was down, um, it also affected the weekly release happening today, because the release the with um, the release directly push um, components to to the Azure file storage, so it's available for get the Jenkins IO. And we faced a really weird issue again with the file, the same uh, Azure file storage, uh, which said um, permission issue on the file, which could not happen because it's a CIF, CIFS volume. Um, but yeah, so basically I had to modify the pod this afternoon used by the release environment to not mount the Azure file storage. So um, if we decide to stick to the Azure file storage, uh, that's fine. Uh, we'll have to revert my change. And if not, we'll have to slightly modify the release environments. So the really good thing is right now, because we still have the process to push to the to the way we were doing previously. So we still have the process to automatically push new uh, components to package the Jenkins.io, which means that we have a fallback situation. Um, as long as get the Jenkins.io running on Kubernetes is not back, as long as we don't have access to the Azure file storage, we are still able to rely on the machine running on Amazon. So um, unless you have one last question, I propose to stop the meeting here. So one call, one. Uh, quick question, how urgent is it to resolve the situation or could we in theory continue as is indefinitely besides the fact that we now have a single point of failure here for distribution? So, sorry. Um, so can you repeat the question? I was... We're currently on a fallback situation. Um, is that something that we can live with if need be for several weeks or do we need to get to a real better situation and restore the Azure stuff as soon so, as possible? No, so the current situation can work for weeks, even months, uh, because the machine is the same machine that was used for Mirror's touching in the So we know that the machine can handle the load. So that's a good thing. Um, the service is running, it's easy to configure. That's a really good thing. The problem is that machine is out of sync with our Puppet Master. Um, and so we, I mean, if we decide to keep the current situation, then we would have to work on the Puppet code to automatically configure that machine because it's a virtual machine. So it's not a Kubernetes environment. So um, the, the, the way we configure the service is slightly different. Um, and so, yeah. So basically, we need to have access. We need to have access to the file storage because um, mirror bits need the, the files locally to know what are the ashes for those files. And based on all those ashes, it says you can be redirected to that specific mirror. So that's why we need a location containing every component. Um, so to answer to the question, we can we could stay for weeks. Um, what we fear me is. Um, when you do manual procedure on a server, if the person who did the procedure 
left are also not available, um, then you end up by trying to figure out what would need to be done, basically. So um, okay. it works, but I'm not comfortable to take this situation. OK, thank you. So I propose to stop the meeting here. Thanks for your time. See you back on RSC and yeah, have a good day. Bye bye.